Hi guys, welcome to Everlast Cyber. In this video, we'll be talking about the TCP IP model. For a heads up, we will be referencing the OSI model a lot here, so if you have not watched that video, please check it out first, then come back and watch this. So what is the TCP IP model? It is a layered networking model that describes how data is transmitted between computers on a network. Or we can say it is a model designed to standardize computer networking. Sound familiar? It should, because it's the same description as the OSI model. The OSI model, while widely referenced, is not used in the real world. The TCP IP model, however, is the real deal. It is made up of four simple layers, which are the application, transport, internet, and link layer. Just like the OSI model, it is numbered from the bottom to the top, however. The direction depends on if you are sending or receiving traffic. This is the original model, however it has been updated. Here is updated model where there is one extra layer and one renamed layer. If you remember, the OSI model has seven layers compared to our five here. However, when you look at it, you will notice that the application, presentation, and session layers are just shown as application layers in the TCP IP model. All the other layers line up nicely, which is great, because we should already know the concept of how this works. Let's do a quick reminder about the protocols and devices at each layer. The application layer. We have application protocols like HTTP, FTP, and SMTP. The two most common transport protocols are TCP and UDP. Port numbers are also added here. At the network layer, we have the Internet Protocol, or IP and routers also operate at this layer. The data link layer contains Ethernet switches at this layer, although you can get layer 3 switches that have some routing capabilities. Finally, we have the physical layer. Think of it as everything we can touch and feel. Things like cables and network interface cards. Okay, so as we send data, each layer will add its own bit of information. This process is called encapsulation. When we hit the physical layer, the data is transmitted over to the receiving device. The receiving device then starts to decapsulate the data. We saw this in the OSI model, but in this video, we will take a closer look. We start with our application data at layer 5. This is then passed down to the next layer, where the transport information is added. This is a TCP header. Each time a header is added, this will contain specific information. For instance, a TCP header will contain things like the source and destination port numbers, sequence numbers, and a few more bits of information. Next, we move to the network layer, where we add the IP header. This will contain the source and destination IP address as well as some other bits of information. Finally, we have the data link layer. Here we add not only a header, but a trailer as well. The header contains the main lead, the destination, and the source MAC address, while the trailer contains some error checking information that the receiving side can check and make sure the data has been received correctly. Once the data hits the physical layer, it is physically transmitted so we've gone through the encapsulation process. It's important to note that at each stage the data has a specific name. At layer 5 the data is called data. Once the transport information has been added it's now called a segment. Adding the network layer information makes our segment a packet. And finally, once we add our data link information, the packet becomes a frame. Once the data has been transmitted, the receiving computer decapsulates the information. It will then check the destination MAC address for that frame. And if the frame is destined for our computer, it is processed further. 
The computer then checks the IP information off the packets again, and if the packet is destined for our computer, it is processed further. The transport information is read, and the application data is sent to the receiving application. That's it for the TCP IP model. If you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.